Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure uh, to welcome you. And uh, I will welcome you with two hats, actually. The hat of the host country. So welcome to Sharm Sheikh. It's a pleasure and honor to have you all here with us in Sharm Sheikh, the city of peace. And we hope really to see the real implementation of COP27. And this is, will be the start. And of course, the hat of, as the co-chair with Angelo Riccaboni of Prima. And for those who doesn't know Prima, let me in few seconds tell you that Prima is one of the big initiatives in the Mediterranean that we were all looking forward for and already in four years had achieved a lot. Prima is Partnership for Research and Innovation in the Mediterranean area and it has more than 19, has 19 countries in the region and we are supporting research and we are depending on co-management, co-finance and what's very important is co-decision. And until now, we funded uh, hundreds of projects with more than 250 million euros. Uh, our role is not only funding projects, but to play a major role in the science diplomacy in our region. And I think we all know about how the Mediterranean is very crucial for the whole world and how everything is happening around the Mediterranean. And talking about the COP and our theme today, we see how the Mediterranean is one of the most affected areas with climate change. That's why having such a program as Prima was very crucial, not only for the scientists, but for the whole community. Uh, and we would like to thank all our uh, panelists today to be with us because we are really looking forward to hear from them these discussions and hear from them how to cooperate together and see the impact also of some of Prima projects because one of our target is to see these projects not as publications only but what's most important to see the effect on our communities uh, again welcome to Sharm Sheikh and welcome to the Mediterranean Pavilion and to the Prima event and I will leave the floor for our moderator and our discussions thank you so much <laughs> Good morning to everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Many thanks, uh, Professor Shinawi, for your opening words and insightful consideration. Indeed, Prima is a major program that is uh, impacting extremely positively uh, the region, uh, proposing innovative solutions and uh, sustainable land managers, uh, management practices to counter uh, desertification and indeed uh, to restore uh, dry lands uh, through concrete and operational um, projects. Uh, therefore, uh, this will be actually the start of our meeting today. Uh, we have uh, um, a wide range of eminent uh, scientists and speakers today with us. So it's uh, my greatest pleasure to uh, start with the experience from the ground, from a very um, operational point of view. We have uh, three uh, Prima uh, related projects opening today, this uh, side event. And would like to start with uh, Mr. Fandi Zuli, a senior research scientist of the CM Bari and a uh, key partner of the project React for Mad. Uh, Pandi, based on your experience and your project experience and considering the existing regional context, uh, how, in your opinion, uh, uh, sustainable land management uh, can be successfully replicated across the Mediterranean region? And what can we draw from uh, uh, the outcomes and the result of your project up to date? The floor is yours. Well, even from here, uh, I will come back to uh, more details about the, uh, uh, what can be done when we're dealing with sustainable land management. So uh, let me uh, show you the results of a project that we are working together. And it, the project stands for uh, inclusive uh, out, outscaling agroecological actions to restore uh, Mediterranean region. It is a group of partnership between uh, countries that are represented from all sides of the Mediterranean and uh, it's coordinated by the uh, uh, Heraklion University 
in Crete. Uh, the issue when we're dealing with uh, uh, desertification, we should understand that, that there is a vicious process that going on, and I need to move a little, maybe. So the, the, we all know that uh, desertification is a vicious process, that it starts with degradation of the uh, uh, nature resources and then if you know as, as you see at the very end it is uh, reflected in topics of uh, uh, migration and and hunger and malnutrition and people have to move because the life become very very difficult so if you look at the what's going on in the Mediterranean of course we have several projects uh, processes that are uh, creating real hardships we have erosion of course uh, we have the big fires during the summer, uh, overgrazing. There is a big issue also that deals with uh, soil salinity and, and, and water salinization as well. And then we depleting the organic matter content into the soil, which is a very crucial and uh, very uh, important component of, so of soil health. So, uh, and, and actually the climate change will make things worse because what is going to happen, it is that we will lose also additional amount of, of carbon into the soil. And that will accelerate definitely the process of climate change. And we all know that soils could act as sink or also as a source of carbon. And uh, uh, the, the other topic important that we are addressing in the project is that we're looking also at the ecosystem. So not necessarily only at land degradation or soil degradation and desertification as separated. They all work together into an ecosystem approach or, or process. And uh, there are certain levels where the degradation can go beyond a certain level that it is going to be then very uh, difficult, almost impossible to recover. So we have to prevent rather than cure. That, that is also uh, an important component when, when we deal with, with, with land degradation and desertification. Now the issue is that we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, conservation, and which is fine, but I mean, that's not yet uh, all the end of the story. We have to implement uh, sustainable land management practices, and one of them, for example, is agroecology. So by, by doing so, we manage to uh, maintain the uh, fertility level into the soil, but also uh, keeping the uh, yields in a, in a sustainable way so that also farmers can uh, continue to, to, to grow their crops. And there are several publications, there's no time now to uh, we go into detail on that. Uh, now, since the problem is there, and uh, we, we've been talking about this for, for many years, uh, we know that the Mediterranean has a long history, and all the ecosystems also have been continuously under the pressure also of uh, anthropogenic factors and climate is making them worse. So this leads to loss of the resources and, uh, and the, and the and living le uh, level of the, of, of the population. So what is the reason and what is better say what to do about that? And then we know that there are sustainable land and water management are those practices who practically can uh, uh, keep the, 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 the soils into good condition and, and, and well uh, uh, suited for, for future production. But the issue is that in many cases, we, we, we know that there is a lot of also research and our project is also a research project, uh, but still we, we, we face that there are uh, several problems and why these are not being implemented. So if you look, for example, at the barriers, but maybe we still have knowledge gaps. We haven't yet... Uh, uh, and let's say uh, understood everything that uh, how they are interconnected within the ecosystem approach. Obviously, there are also social obstacles. There are sometimes also policy tools that are not uh, functioning well. And of course, you need money in order to uh, to change and to uh, make the uh, uh, sustainable land management uh, useful. Now, the project React for Med. React for Med. It's a uh, uh, I it's a project that brings an approach that it is somehow a combination between uh, top-down and, and, and bottom-up. We do recognize that there are a set number of policies that could be 
uh, well adapted also at regional level but when you go down and to be implemented on the ground there are also the necessary needs that for example local stakeholders need to be part of the whole uh, of the whole process so I, 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 it is a combination between the eight uh, uh, living labs that we call it for those in Europe you know that what are the living labs places of research and innovation and stakeholder involvement uh, we th those are our laboratory uh, let's say uh, uh, literally where the research will be conducted and then once we collected the data and identifying the problem then we have to figure it out what could be done in order that these uh, issues can be addressed and they can also be uh, widely uh, disseminated so that is something that uh, it, it stands at the heart of the project obviously it's a it's a very ambitious project we in project we intend also to disseminate and to reach a large number of uh, uh, of stakeholders throughout the the region and to disseminate also advanced technologies we are something like six months that the project started so we are in the beginning of that but we know very well where we're going to reach and what will going to be the the the, the impacts o of the project now uh, if you allow me and it would be better if this slide could be shown on a full screen because it makes a little bit more sense I have shown this this slide also in a few other presentations but it is something to notice that what I call it there if, uh, the power of fans you see that piece of land is exactly the same on the left on the center and on the right the issue is that uh, the way that we are managing or the farmer that are managing that soil it shows that uh, you can keep it on the good conditions like it is shown on the left side where there's no degradation a few cows grazing there in the central unfortunately the farmers started to plow up and down and those sheet and real erosion maybe now are becoming gullies because I took that picture actually in Sardinia in Italy in 2011 and you can see it on the right it is totally overgrazed there is not a single grass there there is almost all the, 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 the soil organic matter there has been depleted so this issue is that it's all about management and 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 when we talk about sustainable land management we we all know that we have been saying this for 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 years that uh, uh, there is not a fit for all strategy we have to identify them based on local condition and on the local problems and we all know that if you implement sustainable soil management also yields and we're talking about food systems here maybe they can increase all by 58 percent so uh, uh um. management and then if we talk about all the policies and 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 initiatives and land degradation neutrality uh, climate smart agriculture regenerative agriculture carbon farming or carbon markets as we are talking right now so th th there are all uh, issues that we we have to uh, un keep under uh, good uh, uh, con i mean in implementing is the issue so as a conclusion from what we think that this react format project can come out it of course desertification or as I said is a is a vicious uh, process It's complicated and it is also bringing biophysical and socioeconomic factors but it could be reversed if we manage to implement sustainable land management practices we're talking about sustainable food systems in the Mediterranean it's a big issue and here it comes again that land and water become a priority because also we operate in a region with very scarce limited uh, resources in terms of land and water and climate change is making things work and I would like to emphasize that we have to also uh, promote private and public partnerships and investment opportunities and this can be better done if we don't look only at single based country based solutions but we implement a regional approach that brings together also all the countries in the region and I'm sure that uh, my, my colleague Ferras also we speak later on for an initiative that we've been working for quite some time and uh, these are the uh, members in our project and on the them behalf i thank you also very much for listening to me and i will convey them the message that the project was also presented here at cop and uh, once we have better results we will make them sure to uh, uh, show also to the others so thank you
Ole, uh, a lot of important concepts indeed uh, passed through your messages. Conservation is not enough, agroecology is needed, ecosystem approach, uh, this uh, desertification spiral that can be uh, reversed, indeed local stakeholders, their involvement, and a not a fit for all uh, solution. So I just like actually to add that we have very limited time. So for all the speakers to be able to talk, please stay within your five minutes. So with no further ado, I will uh, now pass the floor to our next speaker, Mr. Tagava Koglu from uh, uh, the project Mara Mediterra. Um, you are uh, the main research of the Hellenic Agriculture Organization, Dimitra, but also the coordinator of the project itself. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Allow me to share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Yes, we can very well. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, first, first of all, uh, allow me to thank the organizers for uh, this invitation uh, to participate in this very important event within the framework of uh, COP27 and thus to contribute uh, in such a hot topic for uh, Mediterranean. And I'm talking about a hot topic because Mediterranean food systems face today uh, very severe and persistent and interlinked challenges, challenges without frontiers. We are very well aware of the climate change challenges uh, since uh, Mediterranean is an area heavily affected by climate change. But uh, in recent years, we have uh, also exposed to geopolitical challenges and to global health challenges affecting the entire system. I mean, uh, these are all very interlinked, affecting the cost of production, affecting uh, the way that we manage our natural resources, affecting uh, the societies as a whole. We need this framework. Um, today, we have the rise of also a new consumption patterns and consumer behaviors. Uh, more and more consumers are uh, recently show uh, an increased awareness and concern about the environment, about the way that our products are produced and uh, what is their quality. So uh, taking all this into account, uh, these things means that we have to transform our food systems. We have to transform the way that we manage our natural resources. What we need today is to produce healthier products, is to ensure the environmental health, and also at the same time to achieve multiple uh, socioeconomic benefits. Green jobs, reduce cost of production, equal opportunities, even participatory decision making of how we use our resources. Sustainable land management has a key role to play in this transformation, since land is the cornerstone of the food supply chain. Today, we have several examples uh, of successful sustainable land management practices and measures, but allow me to focus for a moment on what we are doing in the Mara Mediterra project. The project uh, aims to use living labs in order to open up the innovation process and provide tools, services, and operational demonstration of nature-based solutions that are able to address key environmental challenges of Mediterranean, while at the same time ensuring the livelihood of rural societies. In this perspective, a wide range of agroecological and eco-engineering solutions are introduced in our case studies around Mediterranean. In the Greek islands, suffering from desertification, we have agro agroecological practices uh, that will be applied to control erosion, to strengthen the soil carbon sinks, and to produce uh, uh, high quality olive products. Uh, multifunctional uh, floating wetlands will be used in Egypt for biomass production and pollution control as an alternative source of income uh, for the area. Microecosystem based afforestation and reforestation using uh, sewage sludge compost as well as reclaimed water will be used for uh, the restoration of uh, recently burned forest in Lebanon and also for uh, in the desert area of uh, Algeria. Furthermore, uh, there are tools that we are uh, developing uh, for the sustainable management of water resources that will be introduced in areas suffering from drought and uh, salinization. 
non-conventional water resources for irrigation, for example, uh, or for hydraulic barriers to salt, salt water intrusion will be tested in Egypt. And also uh, we have a special concern for the water setup management approach in uh, Turkey, in the Lake Marmara for the restoration of wetland habitats in the area. Now, uh, all those, although these are sound very promising, however, according to our experience within the first months of this uh, project, we have several discussions with decision makers and stakeholders. And it seems that uh, there are some problems there that uh, we need to deal if we want to mainstream these uh, solutions. First of all, uh, according to our experience, uh, there is a lack of operational examples that can be followed by, by the end users. And also there is a lack of knowledge, especially for the new uh, entrants into farming. In this perspective, it seems that uh, there is a distance between academia and end users, and there is, to, there is a need to build uh, a relationship of trust and cooperation under equal terms. Second, there is a limited awareness of the tangible benefits. Um, you know, when I say tangible, I mean what it means for the end users, for the pocket of the end user, in simple words. Uh, unfortunately, the assessment and evaluation of benefits is quite challenging even today, especially in terms of their spatial and temporal extent. If I apply a solution in my field, what it means for the field next to me or uh, for the next five or 10 or 20 years. These things can be uh, explored furthermore. Finally, there is a lack of motivation and support, both technically and financially, especially for the steps, for the first steps of implementing solutions beyond the beaten track. Given these limitations, what can we do? Uh, how can we scale up a successful land management practice? Oh, very sorry. First of all, we have to strengthen our uh, agricultural knowledge and innovation systems and uh, connect, them with, connect them with demonstration sites that can, with, that can promote the operational know-how transfer and the awareness raising. Such an effort we are doing in Marawi Terra project uh, by building a thematic park for the end users where they can explore these kind of opportunities. Uh, in addition, uh, we need to translate science into practice. Uh, we need to, for this purpose, we have to explore alternative means and not conventional, such as living labs, innovation camps, uh, science cafes, and social science labs, which are really interactive and they can promote the transfer of knowledge very effectively. Furthermore, we need to improve our policies and introduce alternative governance schemes. And when I'm talking about schemes, schemes that would be able to endorse, support the living lab activities. We don't want these living labs to be only within the framework of the project, but we want them to be part of our cooperation culture. Uh, we need rural entrepreneurs and support to create uh, clear motives for the end users to adopt sustainable land management practices. And furthermore, uh, we need a market creation for these products, the products that are produced in area using sustainable bar, uh, land management practices and in farm holdings that are using nature-based solutions. This could be also create uh, investment opportunities for the future. In terms of policy, operational uh, tools for assessing the benefits and are, are also necessary. And when I'm saying uh, for this kind of tools, I mean, uh, we need a support system that able to not only to design, but also to monitor and evaluate the measures. And these tools should be linked with uh, indicators that are related to international commitments and strategies. Last but not least, uh, it's the urgent need for synergies and networks that will be able to communicate and capitalize the results and outcomes of uh, such a nice projects that we have today. The cooperation of Salam Med, React for Med, Mara Mediterra under the umbrella of Prima, it's only the beginning. I mean, the Union for the Mediterranean, FAO, UNCCD, national and regional authorities are important collaborators in this effort. After all, uh, the teamwork makes the dream work. Good morning, Thank you everyone. Very much. Questions, please. 
Many thanks, uh, Mr. Tagakoglu. Very important messages from your side too. Introduction of an important concept, consumers, partners, and consumers' behavior, of course, green jobs, uh, nature-based solution, equal opportunities, circular economy, uh, translation, of course, of science into practices, and important also uh, other tool to explore, living labs, social cafe, and these uh, indeed uh, overall innovation program. So thank you very much for all these important uh, um, reflections and uh, points. I will now move to uh, Pier Paolo Roggero, who is the director of the Department of Agricultural Science of the University of Sassari. He cannot be with us as he is flying at the moment. So we have a video and a contribution from his side, and in particular from the project Salon Med. So please play the video. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I will introduce to you the Salamed project uh, on sustainable approaches to land and water management in Mediterranean drylands. I will address questions made by uh, the Prima officers. The hypothesis of Salamed is that desertification and land degradation emerge from uh, uh, the complex uh, socio-ecological systems where biophysical and social drivers are structurally coupled. So in these conditions, the progress for sustainable development comes from systemic innovation, uh, integrating tools for thinking, tools for uh, decision support, and uh, nature-based technologies and new services. In these areas, the uh, soil fertility and water conservation are the preconditions for investing in sustainable development. And the diverse uh, situations of the Mediterranean basin and the Mediterranean social ecosystems and context require a, a tailored solution. So not one solution that fits all. So that's, this is for action in this project. The objective are to test and validate a nature-based practical solution to enhance the resilience of endangered the Mediterranean semi-arid drylands and uh, other solutions to restore degraded ecosystems in arid and hyper-arid lands, but also uh, to engage stakeholders, particularly women and youth, in the living lab processes for the identification and validation of these solutions, and to generate new investment and business opportunities uh, for sustainable land and water management by small and medium enterprise with the help also of um, uh, NGOs and to improve uh, people capacity to adopt new solutions. So there is a capacity building uh, activity uh, for sustainable land and water management in relevant rural district of the Mediterranean Island. We are 15 partners in eight Mediterranean countries, and we designed six living labs, three in Southern Europe and three in Northern Africa. In uh, Northern Africa, we work on water harvesting in, in Egypt, we use the Jesur technology uh, to uh, water harvest uh, to increase plant water use efficiency, uh, drought resilience, and productivity by combining water harvest technique, uh, harvesting techniques with microbial uh, solutions. In uh, uh, Tunisia, we will work on managing the aquifer recharge uh, to improve the capacity of storage of water underground and to use this water for sustainable agriculture. In Maroc, in the Argan Forest, which is a UNESCO site, uh, we will test the uh, subsurface water retention technologies to improve uh, the uh, uh, renewal of the uh, tree component of the Argan Forest. In Southern Europe, we work on dryland resilience, so improving dryland resilience in the uh, Greek olive orchard, uh, where we uh, test different uh, water management solutions to mitigate soil degradation. In uh, Valencia, in Spain, uh, to address uh, the abandonment of the forests, uh, to identify sustainable solutions to combat forest abandonment. And in Sardinia, partly in Maroc, uh, to um, uh, test different uh, grazing tools, microbial inoculants, and water management te technologies to enhance the resilience of silvopastoral systems. Uh, an example of microbial-based biotechnological solutions that we will test in this project 
are based on mycorrhiza, rhizobium, and trichoderma to enhance the capacity of uh, uh, seedlings of forage crops to um, resist to drought uh, and by inoculation of this plant. And the inoculants could be an opportunity, a business opportunity for uh, the young people and local medium uh, and uh, small enterprise uh, to produce uh, new technologies, uh, natural-based uh, technology. Uh, we will also rely on the phenotyping infrastructure of uh, uh, the National Research Council in Italy, uh, the high-throughput phenotyping uh, based on uh, the Fenitaly European infrastructure. Uh, the core of the project is the Living Lab, uh, which is a, a, a social learning uh, space where scientific and local knowledge are hybridized to uh, generate innovative practical solution through uh, the field experiment and co-researching with stakeholders. This uh, engine of social learning will produce uh, uh, business opportunities that are already tested in the field and uh, through a, a strong dissemination and scaling out uh, uh, strategy we will try to remove the barriers for innovation and for the scaling out and ultimately to achieve a systemic change for sustainable land and water management. Uh, the scaling out in particular is based on the implementation agreement with FAO RNE and their Farm and Field School network. The co-design uh, pro of co protocols uh, that will provide uh, the business opportunities for young women and PhD programs and the, the development of new decision support tools to understand the complexity of land and water degradation challenges. And this will ultimately provide new modalities for connecting science and users, small and medium enterprise, NGOs with decision makers. We will uh, work with uh, three uh, uh, small enterprises in uh, Sardinia and Tunisia and in Spain uh, with uh, uh, two NGOs in Palestine and an international uh, uh, researching organization and with FAO RNE uh, together with CAM and CREDA. Thank you for your attention. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Rogero. Many thanks for underlying in addition to innovation, uh, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, innovation brokering, but also uh, systemic in uh, innovation indeed showing uh, and showcasing some nature-based uh, technologies, uh, some uh, social learning, again, stressing the importance, as all the previous speakers did, of uh, um, uh, living labs and uh, uh, cafes uh, as, uh, let's say, a way to get uh, people together and indeed uh, uh, getting uh, knowledge and innovation pass uh, uh, through. Um, I will now move to our uh, next uh, speaker. We have the pleasure to have uh, uh, with us uh, uh, the Land and Water Division of FAO, uh, in particular Mr. Faraz uh, Siad, who is of course a uh, very well known uh, um, reference in uh, uh, the region and uh, uh, with whom we all have very close collaboration. Now for us, uh, the fight against uh, the land degradation is indeed very much linked to uh, food security, but also to the transformation of the uh, food uh, system into, of course, a more sustainable one. There was already a mention of how partnership and collaboration at regional level is uh, urgently needed, but it's also, of course, uh, consolidating. Uh, we are here all together, and indeed uh, the partnership is there and uh, um, ready to be activated. What more can be done? What more is ongoing? You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandra, and thanks to the organizers. Uh, this is a very important side event. Uh, I will be speaking uh, on behalf of myself, as well as our director of Land and Water Division, Mr. Li Feng Li. He is unable to join us. Uh, but um, I will try to address uh, the importance uh, and, and your question, uh, Alessandra. We are already working with you, uh, uh, Union for Mediterranean Sea and Barry, Prima, WOCAT, uh, and other uh, partners in the Mediterranean. 
because the pressures on land and water resources are pushing the productive capacity of agriculture, uh, forestry and pastoral systems to the limit, uh, with alarming impacts on the food security and livelihoods of millions of people. So we need to take action to meet the growing demand of food, feed and fiber, while reducing land degradation and carbon emission, and also conserving uh, biodiversity, reducing the burden on natural resources and ecosystem. Uh, the good news is that um, globally, we have one third of agricultural, uh, uh, sorry, the, 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 the bad news is that we have globally one third of agricultural land uh, is affected by land degradation and desertification. And this is uh, affecting uh, almost 3.2 billion uh, people uh, around the world. Um, in the NENA region alone, the cost of land degradation is uh, 9 billion US dollar per year. Now, uh, there is also estimation that the temperature in the Mediterranean region will be raised by one to three degrees centigrade, and this is expected to impact uh, crop failure, uh, crop productivity, aggravating uh, food insecurity and poverty. Uh, so, therefore, addressing land degradation through a holistic uh, landscape and the cross-sectoral approach is crucial for uh, food security and resilient uh, livelihood. Uh, now we come to the good news. Uh, there are over 2 billion hectares globally can be subject to uh, restoration. In the Nina region, uh, only there is uh, 3.5 million uh, square kilometers that are suitable for introducing sustainable land and water uh, management practices. So we have the bright side, but we have to work uh, together. And um, the Mediterranean region specifically is facing unprecedented and interdependent environmental, economic, and social challenges that affect food security, health, nutrition, sustainability, migration, and thus the livelihoods of people. So we have to act, and uh, the scaling out of uh, sustainable land and water man management to compact land degradation requires robust and participatory planning process across the sectors and landscape. This should be supported by conducive enabling environment, strong political will, sound policies, and inclusive governance of uh, resources. Uh, the Mediterranean is really uh, characterized by challenging rural, urban, and production consumption interlinkages. And this is due to uh, fast population growth and uh, migration. The scarcity uh, of land resources suitable for biomass uh, production due to aridity, uh, the inherently poor and the human degraded soils, as well as limited rainfall uh, in the region, makes farming difficult and vulnerable to natural events. And this is uh, uh, aggravated by the unsustainable use uh, and management of natural resources, uh, land degradation, and climate change. Um, farmers need technical and financial support uh, to implement uh, innovative technological solutions. And uh, the governments are also increasingly asking for science-based support to overcome emerging uh, challenges. Therefore, regional cooperation, uh, north-south and south-south, is needed to scale out land and water good practices to enhance crop productivity with evidence of cost-benefit resilient solutions and the trade-offs among the competing interests. The UN Food System Summit and its Mediterranean Dialogues offer an opportunity to support the shift towards sustainable food systems and accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goal. As an immediate action, uh, the Land MidNet Initiative is aiming to promote regional collaboration, actions, and to act as a transformative catalyst toward sustainable food system. The initiative is a joint work of FAO, Prima, Siambari, Union for Mediterranean, OCAT, several other partners, and several countries in the region from uh, uh, all parts of the Mediterranean. So we have collaboration with 
uh, countries around the Mediterranean. Among the actions that are needed uh, is a decision support tool to address land degradation and the climate change, to enhance sustainable management of shared resources through technical and policy tools, dialogue, and strategic action. Uh, we thought of uh, some actions, uh, immediate actions are necessary to enhance sustainable management of resources, uh, facilitate transformation to sustainable food systems, preserving people livelihood and increasing climate resilience. These are a regional network and knowledge sharing platform across the participating countries, a platform to facilitate and inform investments in sustainable land and water management at regional level, a regional scale investment plans to support policy actions aiming at improved production involvement of youth and women, value chains and marketing leading to sustainable food systems, implementation of sustainable land and water and soil management and restoration activities following a participatory approach and enhanced synergies with current and the future initiatives, training and capacity development on the assessment of land degradation and implementation of sustainable land and water management practices. The challenges and emerging issues in the Mediterranean region requires urgent and immediate actions and concerted efforts to join the forces of several partners. And this is what we are trying to do in the land midnet. This will enhance sustainable food system, natural resources management, livelihood of people, and resilience to climate change. FAO reaffirmed continued commitment to support efforts to combat land degradation and desertification reducing carbon emission for more globally inclusive, efficient, resilient, and sustainable agri-food system, and stand ready to collaborate with countries and partners toward this endeavor. Only as a team, we can achieve these challenging and ambitious goals. Thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, Faraz, many thanks uh, um, for your words and indeed for recalling indeed the Land Magnet, but also the UN uh, uh, Food System Summit and indeed the Mediterranean Dialogues, which have produced quite uh, an important bunch of uh, uh, recommendations that we are all trying to implement, as you, as you mentioned, as uh, a group. You, in fact, refer to investments, and with this, I would like actually to move to our next uh, speaker. We have Ms. Medello, who is the head of unit at the United Nations Convention to Combat uh, Desertification, UNCCD. So, Ms. Uh, Medell, indeed, uh, during last COP, uh, it was stressed uh, uh, the need to leverage investments uh, and indeed to boost regional uh, cooperation. UNCCD has been also launching together with Spain and uh, Senegal, uh, just start of this important COP, uh, uh, an alliance on drought, an international alliance on drought. So it will be very good to hear for, from you, uh, how the Mediterranean uh, can uh, actively participate in this uh, uh, alliance uh, and uh, together with other countries. Uh, um, activate uh, measures and uh, uh, financing to operate all together. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to first um, thank all my predecessors for recognizing the importance of land and soils uh, in the fight against climate change and the, in the pursuance of uh, sustainability. I represent uh, the UNCCD, which is the one of the three Rio conventions together with climate change and biodiversity. And it is often uh, called as the little sister of the Rio conventions or the lesser known, etc. But I would argue, not, uh, not because I work there, I would argue that it is probably, it, it's the one that has a very, the very, very important mandate, which is the sustainable management of land and water resources. 
Um, so for that reason, I very much appreciate the invitation uh, to come here and to share with you the results of the COP that we just had over COP15 that we had in Avijan in May earlier this year. Um, indeed, uh, the, the presentations uh, that preceded me resonate a lot because our parties, 197 parties, are very much invested in promoting sustainable land management and better ways, uh, better technologies to uh, handle the increasing droughts and the increasing desertification. Uh, it is an urgent matter, it is an issue of food security, it is an issue of water security, and it is an issue of biodiversity conservation and climate action. Um, we, um, our parties adopted 38 decisions. I very much would like to encourage all the members of the Union for the Mediterranean and all your partners to take a look at the body of decisions uh, because parties are now obliged to go back home and implement. Uh, and then in those decisions, we have some very strong commitments to promote um, technology transfer to least developed countries uh, to promote the scalability of projects like the ones we saw just, just now, uh, to promote uh, better finance and, um, and, and the, the widespread knowledge and the widespread information about this, uh, uh, the, the, the knowledge sharing about this, uh, these solutions that are already in place. And then we had a very, very important decision on drought. Uh, which is a commitment by, by our parties to uh, look for alternatives to promote drought resilience and go from a reactive um, outlook on drought to a proactive approach that actually allows us to prevent drought and to uh, reduce the vulnerability, not prevent drought, prevent the, the, be ready for when the drought will strike and reduce the vulnerabilities of societies. I do believe that the three projects that were presented here actually already have many of those solutions in place, and now it is a matter to see how we can scale them and how we can share them with everybody else around the world. There's over 70 countries that were hit by drought in the past two years, countries that have we're not expecting this. We have Canada declaring drought in some areas. We have the worst drought in Europe in 500 years. I don't need to tell to, to, to share that with some Mediterranean countries like Spain. Um, and we have also drought-stricken uh, areas of countries. For example, in Mexico, where I come from, the north of the country is now uh, stricken by drought, which is something unheard of. It, 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 it never was the case before. So the solutions are there. The sustainable land management techniques are there. Uh, we need Some of them are actually traditional practices that we need to go back to, to be able to handle the water better and to preserve and to restore the land uh, for, 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 the, for humanity and for, for, for people who make profit of it. Uh, I would just finish by sharing on the Drought Resilience Alliance that was launched by one Mediterranean country, by Spain, and together with Senegal on Monday, on the 7th, here in the context of COP27, they, these two countries decided that it was high time to promote drought resilience for the reasons that I explained before. It, it is unacceptable that drought uh, is an, a humanitarian crisis uh, at this precise time in history. So uh, we are very happy, very grateful that Spain and Senegal took this leadership and they were able to convene so far 30 countries, including the United States, China, Senegal, uh, Uzbekistan, um, Mongolia, Mexico, a lot of Central American, uh, it's several of the Central American countries, and they have opened the call for any other country who wishes to participate. I understand that Spain is reaching out to the rest of the Mediterranean nations, uh, as they are all in it together, they face similar challenges. And uh, we, as UNCCD Secretariat, will be supporting this alliance and actually relying a lot on Senegal, uh, Spain, and all the members of the alliance to come back full circle and support our process. Uh, the intergovernmental process is important. Uh, it sets out principal criteria and then later become 
national legislation and national policies, uh, which are actually the most important ones right now, because they are the ones who will move, will, will, will shift the needle from reaction to, uh, to, um, to a prospective and to a more, uh, I would say, more systemic approach to drought and to land restoration. So I congratulate you for, uh, for this, and I thank you, and I look forward to, uh, to an enhanced cooperation with all of you. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Ms. Medell, uh, for this uh, important intervention. Indeed, I mean, you refer to technologies, to finance, uh, to traditional practices, which, of course, I mean, I have to and are taken, actually, into account. We, um, as UFM, uh, we also directly contributed to your uh, drought preparedness uh, strategies in uh, the region. So this is definitely an approach that we share. Um, so to prepare and not just to cure, as it was mentioned by our previous uh, speakers, this is also reflected uh, all the work that UNCCD is doing is reflected in our uh, UFM ministerial declaration. We had one approved in 2021, last year in October in Cairo, on environment and climate change, precisely uh, to uh, address, among others, uh, these issues. And we have an operative agenda, the Green Agenda agenda, that is uh, indeed uh, ongoing. So thank you very much also for referring to the national dimension. And with this, I would like actually to move to our uh, final uh, speaker, who is uh, uh, Mr. Auberger, uh, the research director of the Meritus of the IRD. So, uh, Mr. Auberger, uh, of course, the fact of land degradation has been felt in all the Nana region, but actually this summer is an example on point of how all these effects are expanding to the wider Euro-Mediterranean region. So, at national level, how um, are you um, operating? How are you activating yourself? And how are basically you and your country contributing to these uh, coordinated efforts in the region? So thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman. And thank the Prima program for allowing me to speak today at the Mediterranean Pavilion. It's a great honor. The Mediterranean region has been experiencing problems of desertification and degradation of the natural environment for at least two millennia. Since ancient times, Greeks, Carthaginians, and Romans have devastated the Mediterranean shores. The worsening of desertification due to the increase, increasing human pressures in the middle of the 20th century as until now mainly concerned the southern and eastern Mediterranean country. But for some years now, with the global warming, most of, uh, <clears throat> most of the driver of desertification have also concerned the northern shore of the Mediterranean. Increasingly frequent and persistent rainfall deficits, large-scale fires, increased water and wind erosion due to frequent extreme events on bare soils, Intense and persistent heat waves, as experienced this summer in European countries, are an aggravating factor in the degradation of environment and biodiversity. Until early the 2000s, artificialization was the main cause of agriculture soil degradation in the Mediterranean country of Europe. Today, degradation by desertification concerns the entire Mediterranean basin, Globally, about 80% and 30% of agricultural and pastoral lands are more or less affected by desertification in the south and the north of the Mediterranean, respectively. Water is of key importance in the Mediterranean region, particularly in the agriculture sector, despite the rapid growth in demand from other sectors. Indeed, of the for the majority of Mediterranean countries, demand from agriculture exceeds 75%. In France, for example, a humid Mediterranean country, the great hydraulic works of the 20th century are no longer sufficient to meet agricultural demands, particularly during, during dry and hot summer, such we had this year, and water limitation are requested. Euro-Mediterranean cooperation in research innovation, such as the Prima Med program, 
allows for an effective partnership to find sustainable solutions to desertification problems through the capitalization and exchange of knowledge. Country of the southern and the eastern shore of the Mediterranean that already know the climate to come on the northern shore have experience and solution to share with the northern Mediterranean countries. To maintain the fertility of Mediterranean soils, which are particularly fragile, to avoid their degradation, and if possible, to recover affected land for agricultural use, the solution tested must be shared and adapted to all local conditions, as we see in the precedent uh, presentation. Improving soil property must also involve the use of new techniques, some of which have been tested in Prima Med and have proven to be effective. Given the similarity of the problems posed by water mobilization and management in the country of the Mediterranean region, regional cooperation as offered by the Prima Med program is beneficial in order to promote the exchange of knowledge and experience and to strengthen national capacities in the search of water saving in agriculture. Jeanne, the, Jeanne. Yes. I'm very I, sorry, we have two minutes before. Okay. I'm very sorry. Okay, no problem. Uh, to conclude my talk, I would say that the new climatic region, as well as the historical and geographical proximities of the Mediterranean peoples, lead to address the challenge of desertification in the whole Mediterranean basin through joint research and development programs, co-imagined, co-financed, co-conducted, and co-evaluated on equitable basins. Solution can be found in both the northern and southern Mediterranean countries and in cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bergel. And uh, building on your co, various co, co organize, cooperate, co imagine, I will now pass the floor to close the event to the co chair of uh, the Prima program, Professor Rika Boni, for the final words and the closing remarks. Thank you very much to all the speakers and to all the participants, uh, participants for being with us. Professor Rika Boni, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for coordinating uh, so well this session. Just a few words to conclude uh, uh, this panel. I think that's a very uh, clear message here. First of all, we know that uh, uh, land degradation and desertification are key issues. We, we, we know that and it was made it very clear. Secondly, we need policies. That is correct. This is for sure. We need also to uh, create more awareness. And this is another important issue which was uh, clearly highlighted. Uh, we need uh, research innovation and uh, I think that uh, projects that uh, we as Prima have funded uh, are clear in this direction and uh, besides them there's a lot of energy in research innovation now in uh, land degradation on land degradation so the key issue now is more on the side of policies and on the side of uh, of uh, awareness by the citizens by the institutions this is where we need to work so we have good very good researchers we have very good uh, research innovation projects the challenges for us now is to scale up these results so the key challenges for the future is uh, how we can share with the businesses how we can share with the communities how we can share with the uh, citizens from one side and on the other side how we can be sure that the citizens institutions and businesses can enter the ecosystem of innovation in order to uh, be aware of what is available and to uh, use the results of it. So I think that uh, it was uh, mentioned in the case of uh, living labs. Living labs are a good way to do it. Another way to do it is uh, to put together our energies and to create also maybe new ways to support our researchers to scale up. So I think that uh, we need uh, to uh, deal with this new challenge. We have done a lot of cooperation so far among researchers, and Prima is a good example of it. Now we need also to work on cooperation among institutions in order to avoid uh, too many applications and to be sure that we are able to scale the best results 
in order to make it sure that we, are, we have an impact. So the key words for the future will be scanning up and cooperating in order to make it. So I can uh, testify with my dear friend, uh, Co-Chair Mohamed uh, Shinawi, that Prima is strongly devoted on it. Prima is uh, very keen to work on these issues with the UFM, FAO, and other major initiatives in the area like uh, SIAM and others, and all together we can make it. So I think that at the next COP, we need to be ready to be more keen and more present in this issue, scaling up the results of these wonderful projects. Thanks to everybody, thanks for, for attending this panel, and now I think that we can close, if Alessandra agrees, this session. Thank you for the participant here in digital. Thank you. Thank you very much.